Hi everyone. Sensors play a key role in any IoT project. So RS-485 is one of the main type of sensors that you can use in most of the industrial applications. So there are some reasons for using them. Uh, one of the reason is it is scalable up to 32 sensors in the bus with Modbus RTU. And uh, another reason is uh, you can connect up to 1200 uh, meters of distance uh, and uh, it can be used in applications like agriculture, etc. And also it is robust, which you can uh, use in any harsh environment uh, and it is having a high noise immunity. And uh, one other reason is it is compatible with any microcontroller. Uh, so uh, you can connect uh, it with any microcontroller. So uh, in this video, we will be discussing on how you can integrate any RS-485 sensor uh, with uh, ESP IDF uh, and we will be using one sensor which is a temperature and humidity sensor so uh, we will be providing a complete guide to integrate that sensor and uh, you can use that in order to integrate any sensor so let's begin uh, so in this video we will be using XYMD02 which is a temperature and humidity sensor uh, with RS-485 Modbus communication protocol. So uh, what you need uh, to make the circuit are uh, the ESP32 development board, uh, the sensor, which I said earlier, and a MAX-485 module and some jumper wires with uh, USB cable uh, to program. And uh, the uh, circuit diagram uh, should be as this and uh, I'll be adding uh, this uh, article link in the video description so that you can refer this and make the circuit. And after uh, making the circuit, you need to uh, set up the ESP IDF. Uh, for that, uh, you need to install ESP IDF through this link uh, in the article. And uh, we have used uh, VS code uh, to uh, make the development environment and uh, you can follow the article here uh, to make the setup uh, with ESP IDF. So uh, it's an easy guide for you to uh, set up the ESP IDF. And uh, here's the complete code. Uh, so I will be discussing each part of that in detail. So uh, first we need to initialize the UART uh, communication and uh, for that uh, this is the uh, function responsible and uh, first uh, the board rate uh, the number of data bits uh, the number of parity bits number of stop bits should be taken through the data sheet uh, you can refer the data sheet from here uh, and uh, this is a screenshot of it and uh, it shows 9600 as board rate bit rate as 8, uh, stop number of stop bits as 1 and the uh, check bits or parity bits as uh, 0. So you need to add that uh, when initializing the, initializing the UART communication and after that you need to uh, assign the GPIO pins for uh, UART communication which is 16 and 17 as per the circuit diagram and uh, we have set RTS pin as 18 uh, which is related to uh, the communication uh, to uh, make it act as a transmitter and a receiver. So uh, we have uh, enabled um, half duplex communication mode here uh, in the uh, in this function. So uh, we have added that RTS pin uh, for uh, the to enable and disable uh, the communication uh, side. Likewise, like you can. As make it as a uh, sender and a receiver by enabling and disabling the RTS RTS pin. So I hope you understand it. And uh, after that, uh, there's a uh, set of uh, things that you need to uh, add in uh, the function code, uh, the sense address and the uh, register address. The function code is taken from the data sheet and the uh, sensor uh, or the slave uh, slave uh, slave id is uh, also taken from the data data sheet but you can change it uh, if needed uh, there's a separate software to change it and uh, 
the register address which is related to the parameters uh, for temperature and humidity there's a separate register if you take it as a continuous stream but if you need temperature alone uh, you you can have a separate uh, register and if you need uh, humidity alone you can have uh, you can use a separate register so likewise you need to use the uh, data sheet to get it i will explain it through here this is uh, for continuous uh, reading of temperature and humidity in here you can see that uh, device address is set to 1 by default but uh, we have changed it to uh, 3 uh, using this uh, guide you can uh, change it otherwise you can just put 1 if you are having a brand new sensor and uh, after that uh, the function code is here it's 4 and uh, in here you can see that the function code is set to 4 and after that for continuous uh, reading of temperature and humidity uh, the register address is set to 1 so uh, should, it should be set to 1 and we have added it here in the code and uh, uh, those are the things that you need to consider uh, when uh, adding uh, those parts in the code and uh, this is basically related to uh, number of registers you request so these two bytes are related to that we are requesting two registers uh, from the sensor uh, one register for uh, temperature and one register for humidity so uh, each of the registers are having two bytes so we will be getting two bytes for each of them and uh, this is the request uh, string and this is the response you are getting for the response you are getting the slave address back and you are getting the function code and it says there will be four bytes uh, all together uh, two for temperature and two for humidity and the other two is for uh, crc error checking so uh, you can just uh, add the uh, request like this uh, in, in this uh, code snippet you will be uh, seeing that each of the byte is assigned with a value uh, as per the uh, request, uh, request string so uh, after that uh, after you send the data uh, the data is sent through this line uh, which is that fun this, is, this function is called to uh, send the request and after that uh, you will be getting uh, the response and uh, it is as we discussed earlier and uh, for reading the response uh, this code snippet is responsible so uh, it basically reads each and every byte uh, in hexadecimal so we are converting that hexadecimal to decimal uh, in order to uh, make it uh, the correct decimal value for uh, temperature and uh, humidity so after that uh, as i discussed here here are the uh, bytes responsible for response uh, string and uh, this uh, part of the snippet is responsible for uh, the entry point uh, for the code and uh, after adding the code and uh, you can just add uh, the necessary slave id function code register address as per your rs45 sensor and uh, after that you can uh, compile the code using this line uh, you, you are able to compile the code and uh, flash the code and then uh, you can just uh, watch the uh, serial monitor uh, through this uh, through the through running this line and uh, you will be seeing this so you will be getting the temperature and uh, humidity uh, values along with the uh, response uh, bytes so uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, and uh, hope you had the clear idea on how to integrate any rs 5 sensor uh, with ESP IDF and uh, if you have any questions you can just add uh, send it to our uh, email uh, which is here uh, info at protonis.co and uh, we have developed a tool uh, which you which you can use to design any 
IoT project. Uh, it gives a clear step-by-step -step guide in order to uh, do it from ideation to completion. So uh, it's free of uh, charge and uh, you can use it and let us know if uh, you face an issue when, when you're using it. So hope you enjoyed this and uh, good luck on your IoT projects. Thank you.